Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our Unity RPG tutorial series. Now, we've been working on this series for a while and we've covered a lot of ground, but what we want to start looking at now is how to add some money and items into the game. So, for example, we want our enemies, when they get killed or destroyed, to drop some money and possibly some items for our player to pick up and continue on their quest and adventure. So we're going to start out by creating a money system, and then we're going to add, in the next episode, the ability for our enemies to actually drop some money for us to collect. And then we'll move on to items and so such other things as that. So, if we're going to create our money system, obviously we're going to need something to use as money. So we're just going to use a simple little coin. So if we go into our art folder and go into our sheet of sprites, um, it should be around, I think it's 530, the way it divides it up. Oh, no, that's too far. Just trying to guess roughly where it is and then we can find it. Almost there. Here we go. So here we go. 531. That's the one I was looking for. So we're just going to use this simple little coin sprite. I'm going to drag it and drop it into the scene here. And we're going to rename it to be a coin. Uh, you can't actually see it in the scene because it's rendered behind the ground. So we need to change the sorting layer to... We'll put it on the same layer as the player. Um, and we'll put it behind the player we'll put it actually at minus 10 so it's behind the player so that when the player walks over the money it'll although it should be immediately picked up it'll just make sure that it disappears or whatever behind the player so we're also going to add to that coin obviously it needs to have something for our player to be able to pick it up so we're going to give it a um circle collider 2d like that and so now that we have, oh, actually just looking at this here, I just realized it created a big massive circle the size of the full sprite. So obviously we don't want that. We only want it to be the size of the coin itself. So we need to adjust the radius down. So it's around the right about, si about the right size. And we'll just move it so it's over the coin, over the center of the coin like that. So it's, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but it's just so that our player is able to pick it up the way we want them to. Okay, so we've got our coin there. And we're obviously going to add our player, give the, give the player our ability to pick up that coin. But we also want to be able to show our players how much coins they've collected and how many coins they actually have at the moment. And to do that, obviously, we're going to need to look at our HUD or our UI elements. So what we have already is our, our little slider showing how much health we have, a little number saying specifically how much health we have. And we have the current level of the player. So we're going to add in another one just below this to represent our coins. So at the moment we have um, all these little bits of text uh, assembled underneath our slider, which is a bit kind of awkward. It doesn't really make sense for all these other bits of text to be there. It makes sense for our HP to be there, but our level doesn't really make sense because it's not related to that. So we're going to reorganize this just a little bit before we do anything else. So if we go to our canvas here, if we right click on that, we can create a new empty object and we'll call this our hood for our heads display as it's commonly called so we have that there and what we want is we want to have this um being anchored in the top left corner so i'm just going to move it roughly up there and we're going to set the anchor point to be the top left corner like that then we're going to make the slider a child of the hood it'll break our prefab but that's okay we can just apply the changes to our prefab anyway so we'll put the slider there and then we're going to drag our hp and our level so that they're both under hood. So now we have them it kind of organized a little bit more sensibly and it makes a bit more sense for us for what we're doing. So now we have that a bit more organized. Let's duplicate our level by hitting Control and D. And we're going to call this, uh, we'll just call it coins. And obviously you can see that it's just made the level uh, 99 a little bit stronger colored because it's overlaid. So we'll drag that down there, roughly there. It doesn't have to be specific. And we'll change our text to say, uh, actually we won't say coins, we'll say gold, however much gold our player currently has. So that's what we want to have. And to make sure that we set everything up so that it's working perfectly the way we want it to, we're gonna switch over to the game view and we can see everything is just fine there. But if we maximize the view, we see we're still getting it appearing in the top left corner is not all getting thrown around all over the place anything weird because you always want to check that stuff with the UI within Unity because sometimes the anchors and different points can end up making things look a little bit weird especially when you start using any of the stretch tools at the side you need to be aware of what you're doing uh, when you're doing these things okay so we've got our HUD set up so let's add 
a way to actually keep track of our, how much money we have and then add a way for our players to pick up that money as we go. So we'll go into our scripts folder and we're going to create a new C Sharp script that we'll call Money Manager. And before we start editing it, we'll go to our canvas and we're just going to add it onto our canvas here because inevitably we'll forget to add it before we run the game. So if we go ahead and add it just as we create it, then we know we're uh, adding at the right time. So there we go, we added in there. Obviously there's nothing in it at the moment. So let's open this up in Mono Develop. Give me a second, there we go. Okay, so if we're going to um, keep track of our player's money, we're gonna need a couple of things. We're obviously gonna to need to make a reference to this bit of text that we just made on the screen here so let's go ahead and do that first we're going to because we're using the ui system of unity again we need to add in using unity engine dot ui like that and then we can just say public text uh let's just call it the money oh, money text and of course if we're going to keep track of how much money we have we need to have a value for us to use so we'll just use a public int current gold so that'll just be how much gold do we currently have in the game now um similar to how we've done some stuff before what we want to be able to do is keep track of how much gold we have between scenes we want to be able to carry it over so we'll just use the player pref system to save whatever current value we have going in the game so what we can do is just say when we start our new game we can load from the player prefs so we can say um our current gold should be equal to player prefs dot get int uh we'll say we'll call it our current money so we're pulling from the player prefs setting whatever our current money is but the problem is of course if this is the first time you're starting the game then this player prefs won't actually be already set. So we need to do a little if statement to check and make sure that our player that this player prefs value already exists. So we can say if player prefs dot has key called current money. So if we already have the key for current money, oh we need the two brackets there, not just one. So if we already have that key in the game, then what we can do is set our current goal based on that but if we don't have that already set we can say else just open and close the brackets or if if our if we can't set our current goal to whatever value should be there then our current vo current goal has to be equal to zero and we want to create our player press as well so we say player press dot set int for current money like that and we'll set the value to be zero so perfect that's 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 all we want to do so this way now we have our value for our current gold in the game so we when we start a new game if we've already collected some money before so say we had five last time we played and we go back into the game we'll still have our five gold as we go the next thing we want to do is make sure that on our screen we're updating what the text is so similar again to what we've done before all we have to do is say on our money text we want to say we want to access the text element of that object and we're going to set it to be um gold and then we also want to say whatever our current gold is now we don't this so we have this um going like this when we first start our game but we don't want this to be called in every single update frame of our game because if our if our game is constantly tell, updating this bit of text then that's just adding more calculations to our system that we don't need because our gold our gold value isn't going to be changing every single uh, frame of the game it'll only be changing whenever our player picks up a coin or if we spend any money or anything like that so what we're going to do is just add a little function down here that we're going to call and this is what we're going to use to update whatever amount of gold is displayed as we add coins to our player. 
So we're going to create this function that we're going to call public void add money. If I could spell if I could spell money, we'd be doing well. So we're going to add our money, and the amount that we want to add, we're going to call our int gold to add. So now we have this new little function created, and obviously what we want to do is take whatever current value of gold that we have, and then we want to add on our new value of gold to add. So we'll say our current gold plus equals gold to add. Then the next thing we want to do is, now that we've changed what our current gold is, we want to update our player press. So we'll say player press dot set int current money and instead of saying zero this time what we want to pass in is whatever our current money or our current gold value actually is like that and then finally as we said we want to update what our money text currently says and the way we can do that is just literally just by copying the same bit of code here and paste it in there just like that so we save that and now if we go back into our game we need to hook up our gold text here to our canvas properly. So let's wait for that to compile and we'll go to our canvas then. And if we scroll down, we see we have the space for our money text. And then in our hood, we want to drag our coins object into our money text slot here. And now when we hit play, what we should see is our gold being set to zero. There we go, it didn't seem to want. Oh, we've got a bit of an error here. Okay, so we, we were getting these errors because um I think when we when we moved uh, or we rearranged some stuff here, it uh, kind of lost a few stuff along the way. So our player health is e empty here. So we need to set that back up. So what well, we can we have two choices. We could either drag our player into the space here, or if we hit the little circle beside, we can find the only player health object in the scene like that. So now if we hit play again, everything should work a little bit better for us. There we go. So you can see uh, my goal value is actually set to 150. That's because I was doing some experiments earlier on. Uh, but if you're when you're doing this for the first time, it should be setting just exactly to zero because what it's doing is loading in from my player prefs the value of 150. So we can see that this is actually working just exactly the way we want to. Um, but what I'm actually gonna do just to fix that for a second here in our money manager and um, what I'm just going to do is explicitly set our player prefs value to be back to zero from we're working as we go through the game here so I'm just going to set that run it once and it'll set our player press value back to zero and so our gold will go back to being zero as well and um, you won't you obviously won't want to have that line permanently in your code you can see i've set it back to zero so i'm happy with that so now i'm just going to delete that like that so now we have our money manager system working so let's add uh, a very simple way to pick up uh, our money when we pick up a coin uh, so we'll go into uh no not that coin we want to go down to this coin here just letting this compile after i save that change so we have our coin here. We've already created the function that will let us um, add money to our money manager. So we just need to be able to, we need to create a simple little script that when our coin is picked up by the player, it'll call that function and add whatever value is associated with this coin. So we're going to create a new script, create a new C sharp script that we're going to call gold pickup. And we'll open this up in mono develop. And as I said, this is this is actually going to be a very simple and very straightforward script. It needs to have a value for whatever our coin is worth. So we'll have a public int that we'll call value. We need to know um, where what the money manager is so that we can make a reference to call the function that will add the money. So we'll say um, public money oop, money manager. That we'll just call the MM for the money manager. And then, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, and then in our start function, we'll say the MM is equal to find object of type 
money manager because there will only be one money money manager in our scene at any time uh, our update we won't use our update at all because what we'll use is our public void or sorry not public void just void if I could spell properly void on trigger enter 2d collider 2d other so this is how we're checking uh, if our player is walking into the trigger box of the coin actually just what I think of it here on our coin did we make it a trigger no we forgot to make it a trigger we want that to be not a solid object in our world we want it to be able to our player to walk into it so what we want to do is check and see if it's the player walking into our coin because otherwise we don't want our enemies being able to pick up money for us so we'll say if other dot game object dot name equals player so if the other object that walked into this is the player then we can say on the money manager we want to add money to our money manager and the amount we want to add is whatever the value of this coin is so we'll say value in that little bracket there like that so now we can save this and go back in here and now we have our coin here we'll give it a second to compile and then we're going to add our script to the coin like that we'll give it a value of say five for now we don't need to assign the money manager because it'll automatically do it uh, we can hit play and now when our when our player walks over the money there we go we get our money picked up and added the value we should actually add one more thing to make sure that our player can't just constantly walk over our money and that's to make sure that the money gets destroyed when it's picked up so we'll just add after our uh, um the value is added to our money manager we can just say destroy game object like that okay so we can save that go back into our game and just have that finished compiling we'll do one more thing what, what we'll do is create um, or not create we'll make our coin into a prefab so that we can later on make sure that our enemies will drop a prefab coin rather than just this uh, coin instance from the game so we'll drag this into our prefabs folder like that there we go we've got our coin and now if we hit play we walk over our coin pick it up and we'll have our five points our five gold there we go and the coin is now gone from the scene so there you go very simply adding a way to be able to pick up money from our for our player uh, this randomly lying around the world so next time out we're going to take a look at a way to uh, drop coins when our enemies are killed and add a little bit of randomness into it as well so that our player uh, so that we don't know exactly how many coins we get from specific enemies we want to make it a little bit more interesting so thanks for watching this episode and i'll be back soon with some more unity tutorial goodness Thanks for checking out this episode, and if you want even more Games Plus James goodness, make sure you hit those subscribe and like buttons. You can also find me on Twitter and Facebook by following the links on screen, where you can find out all the latest news about the channel. And if you want to help support the show, check out the Patreon page, where you can get exclusive content in return for helping make the channel even better. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more.